Dodgers and push the Dodgers to the brink. The Arizona Diamondbacks finally come home, and a roaring crowd of 48,000 is here to greet them. In a sense, their magic number is one. One more victory in this series, and they're on to the LCS against either the Phillies or the Braves. On the other hand, for the Dodgers, well, their unmagic number is two. They're down 2-0 in the series. Their first two starters have allowed nine first-inning runs. A lineup that was very productive all year long has scored but two runs in each of the first two games. And their top two hitters, Betts and Freeman, are a combined one for 13. The 2023 National League Division Series is presented by Booking.com. Up in the booth, he's Ron Darling. I'm Bob Costas. If the Dodgers are going to get back in this series, Ron, they're going to need more from Lance Lynn than they got from Clayton Kershaw or Bobby Miller. You know, for the Dodgers, it was the biggest pitching addition at the deadline was Lance Lynn. He came over, and it was win day when he started. He started 11 times. The Dodgers were 9-2 and two in those games. But in a little over 180 innings this year, he allowed 44 home runs. He's going to have to keep the ball in the ballpark if the Dodgers are to win. He'll be opposed by Brandon Fought, 24-year-old right-hander, up and down between the minors and the majors three times this year. His record, 3-9, and nine, ERA close to six. He'll be the youngest starting pitcher to pitch a game here at Chase Field in their franchise history. They're hoping that that game one start he had against the Milwaukee Brewers will give him enough experience to pitch them in to the LCS. The Dodgers have made a couple of changes in their lineup. They moved J.D. Martinez up to third, and Kike Hernandez comes off the bench, and he'll start in center field. James Altman will start the game on the bench. We'll be back with the first pitch and the lineups after this. Authentic jerseys, caps, t-shirts, and more, and root your favorite team on at MLBShop.com. Happy to be joined, as ever, throughout this postseason by Lauren Shahadi. Lauren. Now, hi, Bob. Arizona giving the ball to their 24-year-old rookie, Brandon Fott. The last time you saw him in the wild card round, and I asked him, I said, what'd you learn? And he laughed. He said, not to throw 2-0 heaters down in the zone. He's got to elevate, and he knows it. Tori Lovello told me his first three pitches will tell you everything you need to know. If one of the first three out of his hand is a sweeper, Bob, he has good feel. He has confidence in his breaking stuff. If all three Three of them are fastballs, Tori said. I'm on high alert, so we will know very soon how this night's going to go for the rookie. Tori calls stoic in the very best of ways, Bob and Ron. Lauren, to speak to your point, he had 94 strikeouts this year. Half of them came on the sweeper. In the minor leagues, he was a strikeout machine. Struck out more than 200, even though he spent part of the season, obviously, in the major leagues. I mean, three and nine for the season, ERA 5.72. But in his last three regular season starts, he was two and one, ERA just under three, 22 strikeouts in 15 innings pitch. Like most 24 year olds, season was uneven. Started in Reno, three different times was sent to the minor leagues, and now pitching in the biggest game ever. Here's the Dodger lineup he will face. It'll begin with Mookie Betts who will get all kinds of MVP support. Freddie Freeman will also get some votes. They're two of the best players in the game. They're a combined one for 13 so far in this series through the first two games. J.D. Martinez had two hits, one of them a solo homer in game two, so Dave Roberts has moved him up to the number three spot. And Kike Hernandez, small sample, but two for five, a double and a homer off fought, is in the starting lineup in center field. James Outman is out for the moment. Bob, this season, Betts and Freeman versus Fott, 7 for 11 with the home run. Betts, who hits a lot of home runs out of that leadoff spot, may be trying to make a statement. Fott gave up 23 home runs in less than 100 innings this year. The Dodgers scored more than 900 runs this season. That's an average of better than 5.5 per game. But they managed just two runs, as we mentioned earlier, in each of the first two games of this series. Well, a little different line of thoughts going to see than we're in the first two games. J.D. Martinez has switched places with Will Smith. He'll be in the third slot in the defense behind Fott. 
and the Arizona defense has been very good in these first two games in the entire postseason. Evan Longoria had some great plays against Milwaukee. Perdomo, Marte, Walker, and Moreno behind the plate. Guriel Jr., Thomas, and Corbin Carroll, the star of this series so far in right. In fact, talking about their defense, they made only 56 errors all year, lowest figure in the majors. They have one error in the four postseason games, but that was by relief pitcher Ryan Thompson. None of their position players has booted one. Mookie Betts steps in. Well, there's a four-seam fastball. So he's got two more pitches to throw a breaking <laughs> ball and leave Torrey Lavello somewhat reassured. Well, I've been in this position before, and I will tell you, as a 24-year-old, you really don't take a breath until you throw a strike. 2-0 and here for Fogg. Does he trust a breaking ball? And risk going down 3-0 to Betts. Answer to that, no. Three consecutive four-seam fastballs despite Lavello's <laughs> urging. He's got a little cut on his fastball, especially up in the strike zone. Just got that by Mookie Betts. And the 2-1 is inside. And that time he pulled the string. I guess he felt he would go fastball until he had a strike on Betts. But now he's down in the count 3-1. and one. Down to third base, Longoria across the diamond, and Betts still looking for his first hit in this series and dating back to the 2021 LCS against the Braves. He's three for his last 35 in October. Well, he had a pitch to hit on the 2-0 count, missed it, and then hit that cutter into the ground. You know, it's all about seeing it through the prism of fandom when anybody can boo Freddie Freeman. <laughs> I mean, come on. 331 for the season. Swings on the first pitch, drives it to left center field. Back goes Goriel and on the track, staggering a bit, he makes the catch. Well, there was the breaking ball you were talking about, Lauren and Bob. And it looked like Freddie was sitting on that first pitch, jumped all over it. And boy, off the bat, I thought it had a chance, but settled into the glove of Guriel. Many pitchers try to get that get me over curveball. Freddie almost made a pay. J.D. Martinez swings on the first one, skies it down the right field line. Corbin Carroll toward the foul line in the corner, makes the catch in foul territory. The Dodgers go quietly in the first. Rain down from the sellout crowd. Here's the lineup that Lance Lynn will face. Corbin Carroll could be unanimous as the National League's Rookie of the Year. Seven for 14 in this postseason with two home runs plus five walks. Lynn out of the stretch. First pitch, bouncer toward Freeman. He'll take it himself. Gets there ahead of Carroll, but Corbin's speed made it close. Well, that's heads up by Freeman. He knows the veteran Lance Lynn challenge to get over there and have the correct speed to get there to first base on time. So Freeman took it himself. Smart play. Lance well, Lynn is 36 years old. 13 and 11 overall this year with an ERA of 5.73, 6 and 9, ERA 6 and a half with the White Sox, 7 and 2, ERA 4.36 as a Dodger. Well, the Dodgers are so pitching rich usually, they don't have to acquire anyone at the deadline, but they've used 17 different starting pitchers, lost over 2,000 days to the injured list for their starting staff. He is a downhill pitcher. He is stubborn, angry, mulish, and he wants to throw strikes, and he wants to challenge every hitter. His 0-1 to Marte. Well, that will be the key for Lynn, though, is if he just doesn't get fastball, heavy, 
pitches, uses the secondary arsenal of changeup and breaking ball. Fly ball to center field in left center. It's Peralta along with Hernandez, and it's Kike, the center fielder, who takes it. Well, some changes in the defense for the Dodgers. You'll see still same in the infield, Muncie, Rojas, Betts, Freeman, and Will Smith behind the plate. But Kike Hernandez is in for James Outman in center field, trying to get a little more offense out of that position. And then Peralta, the ex-diamond back and left, and Hayward with all that gold in right field. Now Tommy Pham, four hits in game one of the series, including a home run. Hasn't played the outfield in a while. Can find the DHing because of what's called turf toe. But here in Arizona, they insist, no, no, we <laughs> don't have turf. This is synthetic grass, so get it straight. Either way, his toe hurts. Comebacker. And what do you know? The Dodgers get through the first, and it's scoreless. We'll put it up both inside and outside Chase Field. The Hank Aaron Award is presented annually to the best overall offensive performer in each league. You can cast your vote today by scanning the QR code or enter at MLB.com backslash Aaron. Dodgers come up in the top of the second, and we check in once again with Lauren Shahadi. And Bob, look where Brandon sets up on the mound. He's on the first base side, and he told me he changed that halfway through the season. Brent Strom thinks setting up there allows the ball to begin in the strike zone and then tail out of it, and hitters have a tougher time picking it up. Ron, does that work? Does a fastball into righties look different from that side? Y yes, it does, and with that changeup, he was cutting it. It was cutting in on lefties. Once he moved to that side of the rubber, it started with that tail away. Only 13 pitches yeah. by the pitchers in that first inning. Seven by Fott and six by Lance Lynn. And Fott's 1-1 pitch to Muncie. Is taken for a strike. If you're wondering, at least historically, about the Dodgers' chances, teams that lost the first two games of a best-of-five series, be it the division series or back in the day before the LCS went to best-of-seven, Lose the first two games at home. Those teams are three and 29 in those circumstances. Mm. To counter that, the Dodgers won their last five consecutive regular season games against the Diamondbacks. Two of them here, and three in a sweep at Dodger Stadium in August. And if you look at the whole year, Bob, 11 times they had winning streaks of three or more. So they can do it. When you win 100 games, <laughs> yeah. Even with some of the travail they've had with injuries and other circumstances, when you win 100 games, it's not out of the question that you can string three in a row together. To his left, Marte. From the edge of the outfield grass, he throws Muncie out. So as we can see, both teams have come out and are being very aggressive against both pitchers, trying to get that first knock, that first run. At one time in this rookie season, Brandon Fought was one and eight with an ERA over six. But then, as we told you, he had some good outings in September, which certainly increased his confidence. Not all that good in the first wild card game against the Brewers, but his teammates bailed him out. He got a no decision. They won the game. Will Smith, two for eight through the first two games. Fly ball to right. In right center. It's Corbin Carroll. So you've seen so far what Fott is going to use against this potent Dodger lineup. He's got that good fastball that sometimes has a little cut on it. That change up that tails away from the lefties. And that sweeper. He has a three quarter arm action. And that sweeper breaking ball that he throws with more horizontal break than vertical break. 13 pitches to get five consecutive outs. Jason Hayward takes inside. 0 for 6 in the first two games with four strikeouts. Two and 0. 
Dodgers have always enjoyed playing here especially of late 22 and 10 in their last 32 here at Chase Field. Three and oh. Kike Hernandez on deck. Could see Hayward swinging here, three and zero. Oh. Takes a strike. Bouncing ball right at Marte. That's that in the top of the second. <laughs> we just missed two pitches Ernie and a ball and a strike so it's all good. <laughs> Christian Walker who in effect succeeded Paul Goldschmidt as the first baseman for the Diamondbacks after Goldschmidt was dealt to the Cardinals. Walker has been very very good not as good as Goldschmidt either here in Arizona or in his MVP season with the Cardinals but still he's done pretty much all they could have hoped for. Stepping in for Goldschmidt. Three and one. He swings and drives one to deep right. Hayward goes back in front of the fence to take it. Well, Hayward always makes it look easy, even when it's a tough play. You see that left hand extended, feeling for that wall. The ball hit right on the nose by Walker, who's had some of the better swings for Arizona, is hitting for some bad luck. Lance Lynn is retired four straight. More on him from Lauren. And Bob, I was just thinking back to when he got to the Dodgers. They needed a strike throwing innings eater. They were hoping for an uptick in velocity, which they thought would naturally come from just being on a competitor, right? And it happened. But now their needs have changed. They told Lance tonight, empty the tank, let it eat. If you can give us three innings with Velo, that's what we want. Thanks, Lauren. Gabriel Moreno swung so hard at the first one from Lynn. He lost his helmet. <laughs> Back in in the 0 1 pitch. You know, Bob, it was interesting. Both managers said if they could get their pitchers through 18 batters, they'd be happy. Two times through the lineup, yep. in effect. Here's the 0 2. Chopper, foul. Fielded by Muncie behind the bag, just foul. One thing you know, Ron, about Lance Lynn. How much he's got left at age 36? Still a bit, yeah. that's obvious, but we know this. He's not going to be overwhelmed by the moment. He's pitched a lot in the postseason. Cardinals, Yankees. Well, I was lucky enough this afternoon to talk to the great Tony LaRusso, who had Lance Lynn on his postseason roster in 2011. Now Muncie has a chance, and he juggles it. Does he have time to recover? The scoop by Freeman, and yes, they get him. I mean, a very simple play for Max at third base. Comes in and just hit the heel of his glove and bobbled it. Luckily, luckily Moreno was running, still had plenty of time, but it had to put something on it. A nice dig 
by Freddie Freeman out of the dirt. That was an in-between hop for Freddie. Among his many baseball skills, he's so adept at that kind of play. Lourdes Goriel Jr. Hey. had a home run in game two. I ought to mention just to close it out that in addition to the Cardinals for whom he appeared in many postseason yeah. games Lance Lynn also had a brief tour of duty with the Yankees and pitched in October for them and for the White Sox two seasons ago. This is his ninth postseason start and quickly just to finish off with that discussion I had with Tony La Russa this afternoon I just said what are your memories of Lance Lynn he said no moment is too big like you said Bob he's just one of those if you want to use the term gamer he's one of your gamers. His one two to Goriel misses up high. Well his best season in the big leagues speaking of Lynn, came for Tony La Russa's Cardinals in 2012 when he went 18 and 7 and as recently as two years ago not only was he an all star but he finished third in the American League Cy Young Award voting with a record of 11 and 6 for the White Sox and an ERA under three. Here's the 2 2 lash to center field for the game's first hit. These Gurriels know how to hit in October. Yuli, his brother, always a big part of that Houston lineup. And Lourdes having a nice series here in these first three games. Beautiful long swing. Brings up the center fielder, Alec Thomas. Nine home runs during the regular season, but one against the Brewers and one against the Dodgers in this postseason. Through the hole and into center field. Goriel's going to stop at second. Well, I've always thought that this synthetic grass in Arizona always has played fast mm -hmm. through the infield and outfield, and you could see it there on the ground ball by Thomas. Up the middle, but the way the Dodgers had Thomas defensed, there was a gaping hole there. So any ball up the middle was going to get through. A chance for the 38 year old veteran Evan Longoria. In game one, he had an RBI double. Back to back singles for the D backs in the bottom of the second. Posing the game's first threat. Hey. You know, the outfield behind Lynn is going to play a big part in this game while he's in there. Talk about the home runs he give up. He's a fly ball pitcher. So they're going to have to cover a lot of ground here. And tight to Longoria. Before the game, Dave Roberts said they're not missing or losing too much with Kike Hernandez in center field over James Outman. I might disagree a little. I think Outman is an outstanding center fielder. Kike is a real good one. Hmm. Three balls and a strike. The number nine hitter, Geraldo Perdomo, waits on deck. Listen, you never want to pitch around a guy with two outs and the guys on first and second. But Perdomo has struggled so much. You have to be careful with this pitch here. Longoria sitting on the 3 1 pitch and swinging through it. 
Good job by Lynn keeping that pitch just away enough. The runners go on the 3-2 pitch and a swing and a miss for strike three. Arizona strands two and after two no score in game three. Play ball is baseball's global youth initiative to highlight the fun and accessible ways to play our great game to learn more including how to find a league near you go to playball.org and follow at playball on Twitter Facebook and Instagram bottom of the order in the top of the third for the Dodgers Kike Hernandez takes strike I one down the left field line at Chase Field it's 330 right field line 335 374 to both gaps in center field is where it gets interesting Kike sends one down the left field line and it drops in front of Lourdes Goreal for a leadoff hit the first hit of the night for the Dodgers between innings Lauren talked with Dave Roberts Dave you took a deep breath before that three two to Longo how's Lance look you know what I, I think uh, I think it looks good I think you know it's he's doing a nice job of mixing tonight and uh, he's going to make his money made his career on a good fastball so for him to be behind the count to Longo right there uh, and throw a fastball three one three two by him I think that builds some confidence so we just got to kind of not panic on the offensive side still take good at bats and don't forget about the big part of the field I think right now we're aggressive but I think a little bit aggressive to the pool side so I like we're Lance that I just want our guys to stay to the big part of the field tonight appreciate it Dave all right so the Dodgers get their first hit and one pitch later a 4 6 3 double play aggressive to the pull side just like Dave Roberts was talking about Peralta pulls this one into the shade of Cattell Marte Perdomo with that big arm easy double play Miguel Rojas the shortstop and number nine hitter I think when a manager says that his team's aggressive to the pull side what he's saying is that Everyone's trying to be a hero and hit a home run. Let's just group some hits together and get it going. Rojas fouls it back toward us and it lands just beneath us. Just to finish an earlier thought, we can widen out on the shot here. To center field, the wall is 25 feet high, 407 to straight away, and on either side, 413. So you can get some interesting caroms in this mm. ballpark if you're talking about balls to center field or slightly left or right of center. When you're doing a three game series here you would never be surprised if there is one inside the park home run that results at some point. Thoughts 0 2 pitch to Rojas. You know when you hear the chance of beat L.A. beat L.A. Yes. For a long time Arizona was really Dodger territory. Dodgers come out here the Dodger network and Vin Scully is on the air. Throughout the western part of the United States. That's up high. So lots of Dodger fans at least going back a generation or two here. And for years the Dodgers of course trained famously at Dodger Town in Vero Beach. Mm. But these days they train at Camelback Ranch in Glendale nearby here. So there's all kinds of Dodger connections which didn't stop the Arizona fans not only from booing every Dodger including Benson Freeman and Roberts but also their own guys J.D. Martinez who had a four home run game for them when he played briefly for the Diamondbacks and David Peralta who played here for nine years before becoming a Dodger passions run high that's right. thought this would be a good matchup for Rojas he's got more of a flat swing handles the ball up in the strike zone a little better than some of the other hitters rolls one toward short and his opposite number Perdomo throws him out we played two and a half no score.
The 2023 National League Division Series is presented by Booking.com. This postseason, get the best. Well, they just changed the promo on me. Yes? Let's try this one. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Customize your feed, get personalized stats and highlights, and enjoy free live streams with the MLB app. Your home for postseason baseball. Download the MLB app today. And forget whatever that other one was, <laughs> because I certainly have. Geraldo Perdomo starts it in the bottom of the third. Saw him uh, fake the bunt there. The bunt is a big part of his game, whether it's a sacrifice or bunting for a hit. Muncie in close at third. Hi. Two and one. Say that Lance Lynn is a big guy understates it. I think Burley is an appropriate <laughs> adjective. And here's Perdomo. Look at this. Hayward back at the fence. Can't get it. Gone. He hit only six during the regular season. And he wasn't hitting at all in this postseason. But one swing changed all that. Ten home runs now for these Diamondbacks in the postseason and from the most unlikely hitter in their lineup Perdomo. Now Corbin Carroll takes a strike well a couple of things Carroll waiting on deck Perdomo who you think doesn't present as much of a threat. Lynn doesn't want to fall behind. Might have grooved one. Boom. Roll to second. Betts throws Carroll out. I mean, a big swing here from Perdomo in that 3 1 count. And he got all of it. I mean, a Ruthian swing almost fell over backwards to Perdomo. Lynn didn't want to walk him. Instead, he let him trot. And as we mentioned, Lance Lynn allowed 44 home runs this year in 183 innings pitched. The record is Burt Blylevin, Hall of Fame right-hander, who allowed 50 in 1986 in 272 innings pitched. So proportionately, Lynn has allowed more per inning pitched by a lot. And he gives one up to Perdomo here to start the scoring in game three. To Del Marte, if it's fair, and it is, and this ball is way gone. Well, this is what you know about Lance Lynn. He gives up homers. You know, Marte in his first at bat, a long drive to left center field that stayed in the ballpark. He is so strong and shows why right there. Dave Roberts was talking about Lance Lynn when he came over to the Dodgers. He would be cruising, and the next thing you know, mm -hmm. a couple of home runs in a row. That just happened to him here in the third. Marte hit 25 during the season. And that was a tape measure shot. Same pitch it looks like. Yeah, just a cutter that he never got in. Just a spinner over the middle of the plate. Marte knew right away. Big bouncer. Betts has it. And Pham is thrown out. Marte went with very, very few people go here at Chase Field.
two out but two in on a pair of solo homers and here's Christian Walker. Just to fill out the previous thought because Perdomo jumped all over it <laughs> and then Marte. So just to dot the I and cross the T. Lance Lynn, burly guy, 6'5 and 270. <laughs> Walker fouls it off. For his career, as we look at the heroes of the moment. Marte and Perdomo for his career. Lynn is 136 and 95 with an ERA of 3.74. He has been a good, not great, but good pitcher for a long time. And a reliable pitcher who'll take the ball and give you innings. He was a more valuable pitcher in the day when they coveted starts and innings pitched. Three and one. Last two innings, though, he's gotten into a lot of hitters' counts, and that's proved costly. Well, you'd know better as a former big league pitcher, but I'm thinking Lance Lynn is looking at Perdomo. The count is three and one. I don't want to walk this guy ahead of Corbin Carroll, and then boom, he hurts him right. every bit as much as Carroll could have. And here's another shot to deep left, down the line, and gone! Three solo homers in the inning. This time it's Christian Walker. Well, for the first time in this series, the Dodgers did not get hurt in the first, but they're getting punished in the third. And maybe tonight, the D-backs magic number is three. Looking to sweep it in three. Scoring three runs in the third on three solo home runs. Hanging breaking ball there from Lance Lynn. Christian Walker had been 0 for 6 with four punch outs against Lynn until that moment. And here's Moreno. His first at bat, line drive to right field that looked like he was leaving the ballpark. That one did leave to left. Caleb Ferguson is up now in the Dodger bullpen. In a perfect world, he wanted to bring in Caleb Ferguson for Alec Thomas and through that string of hitters, but he might have to go to him earlier. Right field, Hayward toward the line, near the foul pole. Fair ball, home run. Now Hayward may be saying a replay is worth a look. Might be worth the challenge. In the bullpen, they're saying it was foul. Hayward is saying it was foul. The right field umpire, Gabe Morales, said fair. Danny Lehman is the bench coach, talking to Dave Roberts. The umpires will get together here, Bob, anytime on a home run that they're not sure of the call. Remember, the extra umpires are used in the postseason. There's two that are situated on the left field and the right field line today. Gabe Morales, who was behind the plate in yesterday and game two, is on that right field line. Todd Titchener, the plate umpire, is the crew chief. He waved it off, said it's not a home run, but now Tori Lovello has asked the, the for the umpires to take a look. The foul ball is under a crew chief review. Well, you think about this. You've got the umpire down the right field line. The replay review is powered by Zoom. You got the umpire there. 
hard to believe that Morales didn't have a better view of it than anybody else. Looks foul to me because you never lost a view of the ball. A lot of times you'll see that ball. It's inside the line. You'll lose a view of it. Hard to see there. But the first look, the ball seemed foul. Well, Hayward was certain of it. Guys in the Dodger bullpen seem certain of it. Uh, they have a vested interest yes, in this they do. being foul. But you know what? The camera doesn't lie in this case, and it looks foul. The call on the field is confirmed. Foul ball. 2-2 two -two count. That was a historical call right there. Never in the postseason has there been four home runs in an inning. Ever? Ever. Going all the way back to the World Series and more than 100 years ago. Postseason history. Wow. <laughs> Caleb Ferguson had a good look. So Christian Walker has the home run erased oh. and then hits the next pitch to the moon. There's your fourth home run. I've never seen anything like this. Nor have I. rare it is for a hitter to hit a ball that's a home run foul and then on the next pitch hit it fair for a home run but then to hit it after a replay review I'll tell you what I'll tell you how much I've never seen anything like it Christian Walker homered earlier that was Gabriel Moreno there's so much going on <laughs> Moreno rounds the bases takes off his helmet wait a minute there's Gabriel four home runs in the inning for the Diamondbacks By Geico. Perdomo, Marte, Walker, and then Moreno all connected. And the and the inning's still going on as Caleb Ferguson comes in. In this era of having to face three batters each and every time yeah. you come into a game. 68 games appeared in 60 and a third innings pitched by Caleb Ferguson. Very unusual. Well, of course, you don't have to face three if you finish the inning. That's right. So if you come in yeah. in a lefty-lefty situation, close out the inning, then you can be done if your manager wants it that way. Hey! Lourdes Goriel Jr. had a single his first time up. Crooked number that you try to stay away from if you're a team or a starting pitcher has haunted the Dodgers starting pitching this series. And while they still have six more at bats remaining, 18 outs remaining, the way this series has gone, the way their lineup has sputtered. Can't be too confident about the Dodgers' ability to come back here. So far in this series, the Dodgers are a composite 11 for 72 for a batting average of 153. And their starting pitching has gone four and two thirds. 16 hits and 13 runs. Hit sharply, Muncy. Tough hop, fields it, fires to Freeman. And that finally puts an end to the D back third. Six 
p.m. on TBS True TV and Max. Game four, Braves and Phillies. Phillies hit six home runs. In winning today, Castellanos and Harper each had two. D-backs just finished hitting four in a single inning. If the Dodgers come back and force a fourth game, then we'll be back here at 9 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow on TBS True TV and Max. Brandon fought now in front four nothing Mookie Betts swings on the first pitch sends it out to center field and a nice running catch by Alec Thomas. Well even the balls hit on the nose by Betts are not falling in now just a fine play by Thomas to take the right angle and run that down. Freddie Freeman fly the deep left his first time up. Hey. Not only did the D-backs hit four home runs in a single inning but Gabriel Moreno after having his home run reversed and correctly yeah. upon review hit the next pitch out of the park. Marte that takes care of Freeman more on the four homers here's Lauren and Bob I'm over here by the Diamondbacks dugout pitching coach Brent Strom pacing looking at his notes the guy said smile he hit four home runs in an inning he said uh -uh, I've been around way too long to smile in the fourth I'm worried about throwing strikes you do your job I'll do mine how Brent Strom is that right Bob? <laughs> you bet Brent Strom esteemed pitching coach will turn 75 on Saturday it's one of the best to ever do it. So in innings one through three in this series the Dodgers have been outscored 16 to nothing. The Dodgers won the World Series in the shortened season of 2020. The next year in the LCS they were beaten by the Braves the ultimate world champions but a team they were 16 games better than during the season actually checking my math 18 games yeah. better during the season then last year the Padres ousted them in the division series a team they were 22 games better and here the Diamondbacks who finished 16 behind them are on the verge of a sweep. Tonight's StatCast 3D is powered by Google Cloud. Sixteen hundred and fifty feet of home runs approximately for the Diamondbacks. Caleb Ferguson stays in for the Dodgers and faces Alec Thomas as we go to the bottom of the fourth. Thomas had a single his first time up. Here we go. Alec Thomas, as we mentioned, had nine home runs during the season. He has two in the playoffs. Gabriel Moreno also had nine. He has three in the playoffs. Ah. Hmm. Thomas strikes out looking. You want to watch a movie? You're going to need a big screen. Fly Emirates, fly better. And so we're talking about Thomas yeah. and Moreno, each with nine, and between them they have five. Well, Arizona hit 166 home runs this year, 23rd out of 30 big league teams, 13 now in the postseason. And that's in five games, actually, four and a half. They have found their slug in the post, right? Evan Longoria. Yeah, yeah, 
slice foul. It's an interesting number you said 166 home runs. Did you say they hit this year? They also stole mm -hmm. 166 base bases. How about that balance? There you go. <laughs> Higher up the speed chart than the power chart, but the number's the same. Ha! Got him. <laughs> Two strikeouts recorded in the fourth by Ferguson. Both hitters looking here, Thomas and now uh, Longoria. Switch hitter Perdomo turns around to the right side and hits one toward his counterpart at shortstop, Rojas, who throws him out. One, two, three, bottom of the fourth. But the D-backs lead by four. Well, Brandon Fogg could not be any better than he's been through these first four innings. Twelve hitters he's faced, ten first pitch strikes. He's had two seven pitch innings. He's had five first pitch outs. He has been so aggressive in the strike zone. And like Lauren said after she talked to Tori Lovello, he has been using his secondary pitches as well. That's why he's been successful so far. Four shutout innings, and he leads four to nothing. Hey. A strike to Max Muncy. Thank you. you know, I know the Diamondbacks, like many teams, have kind of a scripted approach in these postseason games. In fact, Joe Mandiply, the left handers, up in the bullpen for the Diamondbacks while this kid's throwing the game of his life. But Torrey's going to have to make a decision. What do you do with a pitcher who's having the game of his life? Well, you might extend him by an inning. <laughs> yeah. Or b batter to batter, but keep going. We've seen so far with other teams in the post when the decision to take out a pitcher has always come a little earlier than late. Down goes Muncy. Two strikeouts in a row now for Fott, J.D. Martinez, and the change up to Muncy. Way out in front. Will Smith flied out his first time up. Through four and a third, the Dodgers have one hit off fought. A third inning single by Kike Hernandez. Will Smith gets into one, sends it to deep left, back near the fence, and beyond the reach of Goriel. Smith pulls in at second with a double. And here comes Lavello. Wow. I knew he had to be perfect or he's going to be out of this ball game. What an effort by Brandon Fogg. Of course, now technically, he can't get a postseason victory because as the starter, he didn't go through five. He got a victory. Oh, yeah. <laughs> a moral victory for sure. And the crowd of 48,000 plus certainly appreciates it. Five G network. I mean, both of these teams needed a big effort from their starting pitcher, and the Diamondbacks got it from the 24 year old Fott. Well, Joe Mantiply in there, left hander who very rarely ever throws a fastball. Curveball, slider, changeup. 
contact pitcher. An all-star last year for the Diamondbacks. Came into game one of this series on Saturday night at Dodger Stadium in the seventh inning, relieving Merrill Kelly. Promptly struck out Chris Taylor and got Kike Hernandez to fly out. And those are the two hitters he's going to face here. Because with the left-hander in the game, Jason Hayward is pulled, and up comes Chris Taylor to bat for him. Will Smith, who runs well for a catcher, is at second base with one out. Offense. Before the game, there was a lot of talk of the batting lineup being changed for Dave Roberts, and he did. He inserted Kike Hernandez. There was some thought that Chris Taylor might even get the call, but with Lynn pitching, a fly ball pitcher, Hayward started the game because of his gold glove. Taylor looks to bunt and fouls it off. Unfortunately, most of the balls that the D-backs <laughs> hit off Lynn were beyond anyone's glove. Yeah, Hayward need to be a little taller tonight. That one caromed off the bat of Taylor and caught Moreno. Got him right in the right hand. Usually your catcher, they'll hold that hand behind their thigh or their back. He had it tucked right underneath and it caught right off the top of his hand. Mm. I remember when I was a kid, Johnny Bench was the first catcher I had ever seen. It started to put his hand behind his back to protect it, to not have those hands of the old catchers you meet yeah. today and shake their hand and every finger goes every which way but loose. Boy, Boom. right off the top of his hand. He has done very well with three home runs in this postseason. But he might get a purple heart coming out of him. Remember, he got a conked That's right. on the head in the first game against the Brewers on a backswing. And now this. His catchers are tough. This is what you were talking about, Bob. With a swing by Terang that just caught him in the back of the head. He stayed in that inning, but once he came to the bench, he said he was feeling some nauseous, feeling nauseous. That's when they took him out of the game, but he passed all the concussion protocols, started the first game against the Dodgers, and here his hand looks well enough to go on and play. You can hear the, the crowd chanting Gabby. He has been in the middle of a lot of stuff. <laughs> the four home run inning was remarkable enough. But he hit one down the right field line. Would have been the fourth. Called a home run. Then reversed upon review. And on the very next pitch, he launches one of the left center. Here, you want four? Here you go. I don't think I've ever seen something like that with the replay in the middle of that. So there was a big time in between home runs. You can see his hand swelling up already. Want me to do it twice? I'll do it twice. <laughs> Here we go. You know, it got me to thinking while you were listing all the young players, Thomas, Moreno, and Carroll, that have had a good series or good postseason for the Arizona Diamondbacks. The young players for the Dodgers, Miller and Alvin, have not. Mm hmm Corbin Carroll out in right field. What you do in the postseason doesn't count. The MVP voting, Cy Young, Rookie of the Year, and such. Those votes have to be in at the end of the regular season, but still, when it comes to reputation, Corbin Carroll is burnishing <laughs> that reputation in October. He was going to win the award anyway. Well, whoever didn't vote for him for the Rookie of the Year is now saying to himself, yeah, I got that one wrong.
Man to play. With this one two pitch to Taylor. The bullpen for the Diamondbacks have inherited 14 runners. Only one has scored. Their bullpen has been excellent in the postseason. It was very shaky midseason this year. Then with Paul Seawald coming over from Seattle at the deadline. They were terrific in September, even better in October, and Taylor strikes out here. When you flip it over to the Dodgers, Despite their starting pitching woes with all the injuries and other circumstances in the second half of the season their bullpen was terrific and in these three games their bullpen has been effective but it's the starters who have done them in. Hernandez had a single in the third he takes a strike. The Dodgers have gone to the postseason 11 straight years winning the division 10 of those 11 and the one time they didn't they won 106 games. There are only two longer streaks in the history of baseball. Braves and Yankees. There's a fly ball to left center field. Goriel calls for it on the warning track and takes it. Despite. Those gaudy achievements during the regular season, there's been a whole lot of postseason disappointment. The 2023 National League Division Series is presented by Booking.com. You can get into the game with Max and the Bleacher Report Sports add on. And it's on us for a limited time after the promo period added for nine ninety nine to a max base plan. Top of the order. In the bottom of the fifth. Carroll Marte and Pham. With the D-backs looking to add to a four nothing lead. Here are the changes for the Dodgers. Mookie Betts moves from second base to right field. Chris Taylor is the new center fielder. Kike Hernandez comes in from center field to play second base. Huh? 3 and 0 to Carroll. 0 for 2 so far tonight. That's a strike. The three one coming from Caleb Ferguson. Misses for a lead off walk. Between innings Brandon fought talk with Lauren here it is. Brandon, congratulations. Swing and miss on the change. The four seam are working. What pleased you most about your performance tonight? Uh, I think just just getting ahead. Uh, we put up four home run, home runs in the in the early on, and I think just getting quick innings and getting back in the dugout, getting the bats hot. What did Tori tell you when he took you out? Uh, he said the matchups were were better up with Joe, and, and you got to make a managerial decision and, and let him let it be. And we trust Joe to death. So uh, just getting the bullpen the bullpen's been hot. Just getting them in the game and, and letting them go. In terms of best you've ever thrown, where does this rank, Brandon? Uh, probably pretty high, especially yeah. on the stage. So. <laughs> As a rookie in October, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Brandon fought 25 on Sunday. Can celebrate early, perhaps tonight.
transmitted in any form, and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Hoping to keep it at least reasonably close. Dave Roberts goes to the bullpen again. Here's Michael Grove. Well, he likes his breaking ball, I guess, against uh, Cattell Marte here. Didn't want to see him batting right-handed, the switch hitter, Marte against Ferguson. Marte homered in the third. One of four hit by the D-backs in that inning. Carroll leading away from first, stole 54 during the season. And he dives back. Only thrown out five times during the regular season. This is his fifth postseason game. He's been on base 13 times. Seven hits and six walks. There he goes. No play. Steals it easily. And for a second, had Grove stepped off, they would have had him. Because he was dancing off the bag and then didn't quite know what to do. Watch. Whenever a runner gets like this, everyone in the infield should be yelling, step off, step off. I don't know if the 48,000, Grove could not hear that. He did not step off an easy stolen base for Carroll. Meanwhile, the pitch was a strike to Marte. And the count is 0-2. Sharply hit. Freeman's got it behind the bag. Grove covers. And Carroll moves on to third with one out. Productive out there by Marte. I mean, he's looking for extra base hit down the line. Freddie's all over it and smothers it and makes the play to first. But a productive A.B. Dodgers pull the infield in, down by four in the bottom of the fifth. Tommy Pham has grounded out twice. Got good arms in the outfield, but the speed of Carroll somewhat negates that. Time, time, time. Good for him. Call time because he wanted the pitcher to engage the hitter. What does that mean? Make sure that he acknowledges that he's in the box before he starts his windup or stretch. One and two. And Pham strikes out. Back to back sliders from Grove gets a strikeout when he needed it. That was impressive from Grove. Pham who's got a four hit game in this series. Couldn't make contact on this excellent breaking ball from Grove. A straight downer. Tommy slams his bat. Christian Walker fly to deep right then homer Smith blocks that one Carroll sprints back to third and dives in ahead of the throw Carroll has so much speed and he's getting such a big lead off third that if it just gets a little by Smith he's just going to try to beat the pitcher to the plate but that one did not get far enough away it's one thing to have speed he has aggressive speed. <laughs> Also down and away. Jose Herrera, their backup catcher, is on deck to hit for Gabriel Moreno. So apparently that injured hand is a bit too much. Well, it looked like it was blowing up, right? Oh. 
3 and 0. Oh. I wouldn't su be surprised if it's a breaking ball here to Walker on a 3 0 -oh count. Misses badly. It's a four pitch walk. So now Jose Herrera, the backup catcher, who's a switch hitter. Oh, wait a minute. They pulled him back. Herrera was in the on deck right. circle. They pulled him back, and this is Paven Smith, and this is Mark Pryor going to the mound, the pitching coach. Once they had to the walk to Walker and two runners on base, they're going to go with their better offensive player off the bench, Paven Smith. This meeting by Pryor really to talk to Grove and Will Smith about Paven Smith and give him the scouting report. This is the injury that we showed that Moreno suffered on that foul tip off the bat. Attempted bunt attempt by Chris Taylor. So Herrera will be in the game soon enough. But it's Paven Smith right now pinch hitting. Ball one. In there. So Gabriel Moreno's last swing of this game and maybe of this series results in a home run. The fourth in an incredible barrage in a single inning from the D backs. Four solo home runs to account for all the scoring to this point in the game. Goriel on deck. Walked him, bases are loaded. Three walks in the inning. Carroll Walker and then Smith batting for Moreno Goriel is singled and grounded out infield back looking for the double play ball one Goriel had that big home run in game two right after J.D. Martinez went deep he answered mm -hmm. here's his numbers with the bases loaded. Hey! Boy, this pitch is, this inning is so big for the Dodgers. Smith has been out there twice. The pitching coach Pryor has been out there once. Just went down and got that breaking ball from Brazier. An immediate answer after the Dodgers had a small sign of life following the Martinez home run. The Dodgers are already down by four and they've scored only four runs in the series. The D backs get any more that may spell the end. And Grove can't find the plate. He's done a better job this inning finding the plate with his breaking ball. His fastball hasn't been close.
That's a strike. Even though Goriel might have been sitting on it, had to throw the fastball just to get the strike. And now the 2 1. A pitch away from walking in a run. More balls than strikes so far to Grove in this inning. In their full count. Guriel took both the 2 0 fastball and the 3 1 fastball. 2 out, 3 2 count, everybody off. Fisted towards short. Rojas throws him out. Sigh of relief for the Dodgers, but they're still down by four. <laughs> Nicely done, EJ. You're improving here. Marte throws Peralta out. By the way, it's not EJ's fault. They give him so much stuff to do. Oh, How do you jam it all in? <laughs> he does. Jose Herrera replaces Moreno, that catcher. And Lauren has an update on Moreno. And Bob, we saw Gabby being hit in the hand by a foul tip in the fifth. He's in the training room right now. I'm told it's a right hand contusion. They're going to x-ray it after the game. He's getting treatment and some pain, Bob, but he can move it. Torrey Lovello, manager of the year, his first season at the D-backs helm in 2017. As recently oh. as two years ago, they lost 110. Here they are on the verge of making it to the LCS against either the Phillies who lead two games to one or the Braves. It's set now the LCS is set. In the American League and it's an all Texas affair the Rangers and the Astros. I mean we've learned so much every time we go into Tori Lovello's office and it's not always about baseball today it was about Larry Fitzgerald and John Wooden. Yeah. Among his many mementos. A Fitzgerald Jersey. And some wooden memorabilia. Lavella went to UCLA, where Wooden, of course, is revered. What a play at first base by Christian Walker. Might have saved Longoria an error. Well, you don't get his name mentioned that often. First, nice pick here by Longoria, being aggressive and coming in. But bounces the throw in between Hop, and what a play by Walker. He's one of the best in the game. Well that's enough from Matt Apply and in comes Ryan Thompson who has done extremely well for them out of the bullpen. The Rays released him in August. Wasn't doing much at all for them. D-backs picked him up. He's been spot on for Arizona. Eleven straight times ten of those eleven as division champions. All of these obviously come in the wild card or more yeah. era. One wild card at least, two, now three. But still, Braves 14, Yankees 13, Dodgers 11. And three times to the World Series, losing to the Astros in 17, the Red Sox in 18, then winning it against the Rays in 2020. He was the manager of the year in 2016, speaking of Dave Roberts. But usually, whether it's a coach in other sports or a manager in baseball, the award goes to the guy helming a team that exceeds expectations. You seldom see it given to a manager who's met expectations. Which brings us to this. Dave Roberts career winning percentage is 630. 
Now other managers have managed longer much longer in some cases but to this point that's the highest career winning percentage of any manager in the history of the game. Wow. But when you talk about expectations as Mookie Betts steps in against Ryan Thompson hey. who sidearms one in there for a strike in 21 the Dodgers were 18 games better in the win column than the Braves and lost to them in the LCS last year in their own division 22 games better than the Padres lost to them in four in the division series and this year in their own division the National League West 16 ahead of the D-backs 100 wins to 84 and on the verge perhaps yeah. of being swept out of the division series. Betts hits it hard but Longoria has it across the diamond and the Dodgers are done in the sixth. Tomorrow Braves and Phillies game four 6 p.m. Eastern on TBS True TV and Max and if the Dodgers should rally and force a game four here on those same outlets at 9 p.m. Eastern time. So Dave Roberts and the Dodgers and Andrew Friedman and the front office have been exemplary in terms of what they've done during the regular season but in terms of fan expectation in, in the minds of some it's not going to matter that they've won 100 or more in five of the last six full seasons including four in a row not counting 2020 when only 60 games were played because they have too infrequently in the minds of many been able to close the deal. Clayton Kershaw would get the ball tomorrow night if the Dodgers can rally here. Alex Vesey out of their bullpen the left hander facing Alec Thomas in the bottom of the sixth to speak to your point Bob some organizations have gotten so good and the Dodgers are one of them it's a World Series or bust each and every year and yet and this is not to make any excuses yeah. because there have been some severe disappointments especially last year and what's on the verge of happening this year but the postseason in baseball now is such a gauntlet <laughs> it's nothing like hey let's win the pennant and now here we are in the World Series. Yeah. Freddie Freeman had a season good enough to win MVP most years. Mookie Betts maybe even better. All the Dodgers left to think about their season slipping away. Hey. Kike Hernandez back in Los Angeles after two and a half seasons with the Red Sox. Full count now to Thomas who singled and struck out. <laughs> Lifts one to shallow left almost in his tracks Peralta. Let's go to Lauren. And Bob there's a common thought around the Dodgers that Ryan Pepio was one of the better options on the mound heading into this game. Dave Roberts told me listen I have to manage this like there are two more games after it. Pepio he's a bulk guy we've seen it all season long and if I'm going to get through this series I need to think past game three. Longoria struck out twice. Well here's the thing. Hey. No matter what the bullpen choices have been the only thing to this point that you can question Roberts on is that maybe he should have pulled Lance Lynn earlier in the yeah. third inning. But none of his relievers even if none of them were named Pepio none of his relievers have allowed the D backs a run. Michael Grove really struggled in the last half inning with three walks but they left the bases loaded. Well Lauren brings up an interesting point and the point is is that why is Pepio not pitched. Well he hasn't pitched. Because you have Clayton Kershaw is going to start tomorrow who's a different Clayton Kershaw at this point in his career and if he started tomorrow you'd have to cover some innings for him as well. Even if he started tomorrow and was very effective 
You're talking about four or five innings. That's right. And Pepio would be the guy up first in the bullpen. I mean, if this was any time during the regular season with this offense of the Dodgers, you would think four runs means nothing. But it seems more tonight. A towering fly ball down the left field line into foul territory and Peralta has no play. There it is some ghastly numbers. Of course when the season began for the Dodgers here in Arizona. Julio Urias and Dustin May pitched the first two games Clayton Kershaw at this stage of his career great as he's been. Because of his limitations was basically their third starter. Then everybody got hurt. Tony Gonsolin added to that list. And Walker Bueller, fingers crossed that he could come back toward the end of the year, wasn't able to. Couldn't bounce back that quickly from Tommy John surgery. Yes! Longoria's punched out. And he struck out three times tonight. Fun great stays across the USA. From boutique hotels to beach house getaways. Booking.com, booking. Yeah. So now Perdomo, switch hitter, turns around to the right side against Vessia. Started the ruckus in the third with a home run. The first of four in the I inning for the D-backs. You think about Perdomo. He's known for his bat control, bunt hits, led the majors in sacrifice bunts, made only three errors all season at shortstop, and he's the guy who ignites the rally. An historic rally. There have never been four home runs in a single inning by any team in postseason history until tonight. Perdomo, Marte, Walker, and Moreno. Three one count from Lynn the cutter right in the middle of the plate and he launched it over the glove of Hayward. He was as surprised as the forty eight thousand people here. Phillies had six home runs today in their win over the Braves. Two and two. The Braves have been the best team in baseball all year long. Safe to say, the Phillies are not intimidated <laughs> by the Atlanta Braves. Took them out last year, ahead of them two games to one this year in the division series. Nobody is as strong, at least over 162, top to bottom, one through nine in their order as the Braves. But the Phillies have lots of thunder in their lineup, too. And they also can counter it. With some outstanding starters from Wheeler to Nola to Suarez. Full count now. <laughs> Liner caught at third base by Max Muncy. It's a 1 2 3 bottom of the sixth and it remains 4 nothing snakes. Four runs in a single inning tonight. The Dodgers have scored four runs in 24 innings mm. in this series. And their two best players Mookie Betts and that guy Freddie Freeman are a combined 0 for 5 tonight. And one for 18 in the series, and the one was an infield single by Freeman. He starts it in the seventh against Ryan Thompson. Freeman, Martinez, and Muncie for the Dodgers. Mm, harmless ground ball to Marte. One out.
You know, Bob, speaking to those numbers you just gave, it'd be different if you were talking about a slugger who would sometimes uh, mm -hmm. go into those streaks. But you're really talking about two of the most consistent performers in the game. Yes. Betts hit 307 this year with 39 homers. Drove in more than 100. Scored more than 100. Freddie Freeman hit 331 with 29 home runs and 59 doubles. Mm. There you go. There's the four guys with more than 100 RBIs and the solo homer by J.D. Martinez in game two is the only run driven home by that quartet. Unless you're talking about Mariano Rivera Trevor Hoffman or these Hall of Fame guys yeah. relievers are kind of up and down they can get into a rut and then all of a sudden they hit a groove and that's the case for Thompson yeah. this year not so good with the Rays in fact not good at all and very good with the Diamondbacks but just looking at him if you'd never seen it before this guy has to be rough on right handed hitters right, right? with that sidearm delivery of slider and sinking fastball from that six foot eight inch perch. Martinez chased the pitch outside the strike zone and that's the way the game and the series has gone for the Dodgers. That's the second out. Even when he misses his spot the ball was supposed to be inside. He missed the foot outside but Marte Martinez still swinging. Now Muncy grounded out struck out cuts and misses. I mean this is where he steps across his body and then fires that ball and like a whirling dervish finishes on his way to first now he takes something off and with the slider once he was out in front I mean nasty slider underneath the bat and inside the Muncie two for his last 24 and the one two pitch checks the swing and it's ball two. Big exhale from Muncie. This ball just missed inside after that breaking ball. Full count. Bounce to the left side and through for a two out hit. Slipped in between Longoria and Perdomo. Really, what Dave Roberts was talking about early in the game wanted his headers to start using the big part of the field, start grouping some hits together, and Muncie does it right here against the, the shaded infield. Will Smith has a double in two trips. He's three for 10 in the series, and now he's four for 11. One of the few, maybe the only Dodger, who has nothing to account for if it should end tonight. Yeah, J.D. Martinez has had some yeah. good at bats as well. But again, big part of the field, putting something together to a point where one big swing gets him back in this game. So now Chris Taylor, who hit for Jason Hayward back in the fifth, and it's Strom who goes to the mound. So. That generally does not mean a pitching change. Maybe just to remind Thompson about the approach to Taylor. Yeah, but also, you know, to give him a blow. All, both of these teams have asked their relievers to go the extra mile in this entire series. 
Thompson being asked to get four outs here in the middle of the game. Chris Taylor has had some big moments for this team in the postseason. Walk off wild card home run against St. Louis, a three home run game. That was against Atlanta. They could use another big hit. Both the heroics against the Braves and the Cardinals came two years ago in the 21 postseason. Thompson pitched an inning and a third in game two. Of course, there was an off day in between. The chant of beat L.A. picks up again. And that's precisely what the D-backs have done to this point. And now a few people decide it would be a good idea to run across the field. And the security people are closing in on them. This guy's going to try and climb the wall and get to the pool, but I'm afraid he's outnumbered. I think he's a little vertically challenged in trying to jump over that wall, so down goes Frazier. <laughs> exactly. Channeling Howard Cosell. <laughs> All right, so as soon as this miscreant is escorted off, we'll resume. And you can catch the NHL on TNT every Wednesday. You can watch it on TNT or stream it on Max. No pitches thrown by Thompson during that delay. Warm night, as you would expect, beautiful in Arizona. Night. Beautiful night. Temperatures got around 92, 93 earlier in the day. It was about 88 when the game started, and now Thompson is going to take some warm-up pitches. He took one, and it was a slider. Just one. That's all he wanted. Two on, two out, and a ball and a strike on Chris Taylor. Into shallow left field, it's going to drop, and it's going to score a run. Here comes the play at the plate, and there's no play as the ball trickles through the infield. Muncie scores. It's 4-1, to one, and the tying run will come to the plate. Dodgers doing a great job this inning, keeping the line moving. This ball ran up the label of Chris Taylor. So strong, though, able to dump it into left field in front of Gurriel. He's got a big arm. The kind of throw bounces into home plate off the glove off Longoria. With two out, Muncie got a good break and scored from second base. Now Kike Hernandez, who combined between the Red Sox and Dodgers, hit 11 home runs this year. Strike one. He didn't like that call. He was the one lineup change for Dave Roberts tonight. Just for these situations. He singled and flied the deep left. Talk about tough on a right-handed hitter. First slider for a strike. That one he had Hernandez chasing. Kike asked for time. And now back in. And Thompson's 0 2 pitch is lined to left center field. The Dodgers are going to draw closer. It's 4 to 2. Four consecutive singles. Mistake there by Thompson made good two good sliders but left this one just over the plate enough for Hernandez to drive it into left center field never able to stop that run in the inning and it's four to two Diamondbacks 
Will Smith scores. Taylor to second. Hernandez now at first. And Thompson is done. Andrew Salfrank is coming in, and we're coming back. See the right-handed hitters against Thompson. Since he landed with the Diamondbacks, right-handers have only hit 139 off him. But the Dodgers strung together three straight hits, with Kike Hernandez getting his second hit and driving a second run for the Dodgers. They're coming. There's Saul Frank, 26 year old rookie, who has been very effective both in 10 regular season games and in the postseason. He pitched in game two, gave up a walk, a big hit, but then a huge strikeout yeah. of James Outman, which was the key out. He's asked to get one out here. Austin Barnes, the backup catcher, the only right handed bat remaining on Dave Roberts' bench. Bats for David Peralta. And chops one to the left side. It's taken by Longoria. And with one pitch, Saul Frank puts an end to the Dodgers seventh. They cut the deficit in half and trail 4-2 as they stretch in Arizona. The Stars and Stripes are back in action against one of Europe's best. Watch the U.S. men's national team battle Germany Saturday on TNT, and you can stream it on Max. Changes for the Dodgers. Taylor, who was already in the game, moves from center to left, and James Outman comes off the bench to play his usual position in center field. This after Austin Barnes batted for David Peralta. Brustar Gratterall out of the bullpen. What a season for Gratterall. But this might be the most important zero he has to put up in a Dodger uniform. Dodgers have two more turns at bat down by two. A ball and a strike to Alec Thomas. Check that that would be Corbin Carroll. They don't look at all alike. <laughs> hey. Top of the order in the bottom of the seventh. One and two. Carroll calls for timeout. I think uh, his career is going to be full of dirty uniforms. Yep. There's a certain Pete Rose quality yeah. about him, right? Right. Tonight, 0 for 2 with a walk. Sellout crowd, official attendance tonight 48,175. On the outside corner, and Carroll strikes out looking. After a lot of breaking balls from Gradwell, he started that sinker right in on him, and it came back over the plate. Surprising Carroll. On Monday night in game two, Gratterall worked two complete innings, needed only 23 pitches to do it, didn't give up a run or a hit. Here's a little bloop into center field for a one out hit for Cattell Marte. So he's two for four. Okay. Gratterall ended the regular season throwing 25 consecutive scoreless innings. Tell Marte now has appeared in nine postseason games. He's had at least one hit in all of them. Fam's 0 for 3. Takes a strike. <laughs> 0 and 2. Oh. 
off the outside edge. And the at bat continues. Gratterall didn't have to change his game for the pitch timer. No one gets it and throws it quicker than he does. True. It's guys <laughs> like Kenley Jansen, former Dodger, <laughs> who really had to adjust. Comebacker, Gratterall fields. They get one, they get two. Just like that, bottom of the seventh is in the books, and it remains 4 2 D backs. Before the game, these are the four sons of Mike and Nicole Hazen. As some of you might know, Mike Hazen, the highly regarded general manager, there he is, of the Diamondbacks, lost his wife, Nicole, a little bit more than a year ago. Died of a rare form of brain cancer. And their four young boys combined to throw out the first pitch before this first postseason game at Chase Field. The Dodgers now have emptied their bench. Colton Wong will bat for Miguel Rojas. Dodgers came into the series with a four man bench. Torrey Lavello has five on his bench. If nothing else, Dave Roberts has a lot of versatile guys, so he can move them around the infield and outfield when he pinch hits or makes a move of one kind or another. Those were Wong's numbers with the Mariners who released him and then with the Dodgers who picked him mm. up. Kevin Ginkle out of the bullpen misses with his first three pitches. They've got Betts and Freeman who haven't broken loose yet but they're the next two hitters. And Wong draws a walk as a pinch hitter and Betts will come to the plate as the tying run. Well Ginkle now has appeared in four of the five postseason games for this Diamondback team. Brent Strom is going to go out and talk to him after that initial walk. Pressure's got to be on Ginkle. And he's got to be feeling it as he four pitched walked long and now time for Betts and Freeman to make up in the series. For the year Ginkle was nine and one ERA two point four eight. Now they've got Seawald as the closer. You bring in a guy like Ginkel in the eighth, generally in good shape, loses the first guy he faces in this situation, Colton Wong. All that experience from Strom, who's one of the best to ever do it. Boy, I'd love to be a fly in the wall and listen to what he just told Ginkel. Ginkel's a veteran. It's his fifth season, all with Arizona. He's not a veteran at this moment, though, I'll no. tell you that. No. This was his best season. But this is a different kind of moment. A strike to Mookie, who's 0 for 3. And 0 for 10 in the series. And dating back to October of 21, this is what he's done in his last 37 October at bats. Marcus Lynn Betts, so named because his parents wanted his initials to be MLB. <laughs> Mookie Betts has now gone 19 games without a home run. About a month ago, last time he connected. So that stopped him from hitting 40. Stalled at 39. The 2 1 pitch in there. Mm. Four seam fastball and Mookie couldn't pull the trigger. Nothing you could do there. Perfect pitch from Ginkle. Perfectly placed. Yeah. Here's the 2 2. Fouled off. Freddie Freeman on deck. Swing and a miss, strike three. Well, it was the 2 1 Hall of Fame pitch that he made that set up this at bat. 
Mookie had to be sitting on that fastball again and he came in with the slider. Mookie now 0 for 11 in this series. Freeman. Yeah, two ground outs to the right side by Freeman in this game. One for nine to this point in the series. High and away, one and one. Who gets ahead of him one and two. Freeman hit 29 home runs. The ball really carries at Chase Field, generally speaking, and tonight's certainly no exception. Not just the homers, but some fly balls that carried to the track. Struck him out. So he walks Wong, and then back to back, he fans Betts and Freeman. Two hitters that very rarely. Go out of the strike zone. And this ball up and away to Freeman. It swung right through it. JD Martinez flied to deep right, struck out twice, has a homer in the series. Hit 33 for the year. Had some of his best moments sitting in this ballpark as a Don Bell. Yep. Before he left for the Red Sox. Hey! Shallow center field. Thomas comes in and that's that. The Dodgers are down to one more inning and the D-backs still cling to a two run lead. The 2023 National League Division Series is presented by Booking.com. Well, Dave Roberts has moved a lot of pieces around the chessboard. Kike Hernandez now will play his third position, started in center field. Now Colton Wong, after batting for Miguel Rojas, comes in to play second base. Kike, who had moved in from the outfield to second, moves across to shortstop to take Rojas's spot. And the new pitcher is their closer, Evan Phillips. But in this situation, Dave Roberts, using his sixth pitcher of the game, can't wait for a lead that has never come at any time in this series. And if they wind up not scoring even a single run on the ninth, they will have scored two runs in every game. Ah. Christian Walker, Jose Herrera, who replaced Moreno behind the plate, and Lourdes Goriel in the bottom of the eighth. The Dodgers bullpen in this series have had to get 61 of the 75 outs. Yikes. Walker had one of the four home runs in the third inning. All the scoring in that inning. And the only traffic on the bases was guys trotting around the bases. <laughs> four solo homers. First time it's ever happened in postseason history. The one two struck him out. All right, here they are again. Perdomo. Marte. Walker. And Moreno. Herrera is a switch hitter. Fouls it back. If you're just joining us, the Moreno home run not only capped the four round tripper outburst, 
but it was peculiar in that he appeared to have hit one down the right field line. A review revealed that it was actually foul. And on the very next pitch, he smashed one into the seats in left center. Muncy bobbles it, picks it up, fires, safe. Well, the second bobble for Muncy in this game, again, yep. off the heel of his glove, he was able to rebound and make the play on the first one, not this time. Herrera aboard on the error, and now Goriel. Diamondbacks have been great front runners in the postseason so far. They've led in 35 of the 44 innings they have played. But at one point in each of the first two games in Milwaukee, they were behind That's right. and had to come back to win, which they did. You're right, Bob. Six unanswered runs in game one, five unanswered runs in game two. Phillips gets ahead of Goriel one and two for the season Evan Phillips had an ERA of 2.05 and converted 24 of 27 save opportunities. He got four outs on 24 pitches in game two on Monday night at Dodger Stadium. Allowed one hit walk one struck out two. His one two pitch to Goriel misses down and away. Well, Phillips likes that breaking ball. That's what he features most of the time. Goriel home run in game two was off a breaking ball from Ryan Brazier. Here's the two two. Fouled out of play. Dave Roberts knows he's going to see Paul Seawald in the ninth. Lofted down the left field line. Taylor, just in fair territory, makes the catch. So that's the second out. And it brings up Alec Thomas. For the Dodgers in the top of the ninth, Max Muncy, Will Smith, Chris Taylor. No one left on the bench. Neither Muncy or Smith has ever faced Seawald. Chris Taylor 0 for 1. Missed with the sweeper one and one. Two balls on a strike. Fans have quieted down a bit almost like they're saving it for the Dodger ninth. They're nervous. The game's too close. They want it too badly. That's going to be inside the bag and down the line. Taylor chases it down. Herrera stops at second. 
Two on, two out. Good hitting by Thomas, who continues to excel in the postseason. Fine catch today, and now a base hit. And now Jace Peterson, left-handed batter who can play third base, is going to bat for Evan Longoria. Outs are so crucial for the Dodgers who have to go into the ninth inning with only the two run deficit prior back out there again. Mark Pryor knows about agonizing defeats. The one I'm about to mention maybe would rank ahead of this disappointment if it turns out that way for the Dodgers. He started game six in 2003. For the Cubs against the Marlins in the LCS at Wrigley Field was cruising along. Then things fell apart late in the game. Steve Bartman reached out on a pop down the left field line. Marlins won the game. Then the next night, Kerry Wood started. He had a home run, actually, and they led again, but that slipped away. Became part of the litany of heartache for the Cubs until they finally broke through in 2016 after a 108 year wait. Talk about a reprieve from the governor. Jace Peterson started his season in Oakland and gets an at bat here in the National League Division Series. A big at bat. Oh. And the A's are one of the stories now in baseball, not because of the likelihood of their appearing in October, but do they stay in Oakland? Is there a last ditch effort that's yeah. successful to keep them there, or do they wind up in Las Vegas? 2 0 pitch. Freeman has it. Underhands to Phillips, and we'll go to the ninth. Seawald will be asked to protect a two run lead and send the D backs to the LCS. Ready to erupt at Chase Field. Up 4 2, the exact score by which they won game two. Game one was a route, 11 to 2. Emmanuel Rivera is the new third baseman. They could have gone with Jace Peterson, who pinched it for Longoria, because Peterson could play third, but they go with Rivera. And now Seawall picked up the save in game two, working the ninth, needed just 11 pitches, set down the Dodgers 1 2 3. Max Muncy, 1 for 3. Takes a ball. Said it before, Muncy or Smith, who's up next, have not faced Seawall. Hey. Seawall does not have high velocity. He has effective and deceptive velocity. Muncy cuts and misses. D backs won 84 games had to go to the end of the season just to qualify for the postseason. Here they are on the verge of the LCS. The 2 2 pitch struck him out. Just a beautiful sweeping breaking ball from Seawald. Started on the outside corner, ends up down underneath the bat of Muncie. Smith has a double and a single in three trips. Four for 11 for the series. Best Dodger hitter. And that's into right field for a base hit. And the Dodgers are still very much alive. Three for four night for Will Smith. Boy, he's been trying to go to right field and up the middle this entire series. And he's broken out here in game three with three hits. Choo choo indeed. Five for 12 for the series. 
Now Chris Taylor who had an RBI single in the seventh. Kike Hernandez waits behind Taylor. Then James Outman, who hasn't had an out bat in the game yet. Yeah. Pop back and out of play. Seawald's one two pitch is hit in the air to deep right center field back near the 413 sign is Thomas for the catch hit it well but to the wrong part of the park I mean the biggest part of the park high drive by Taylor who seemed to get all of it and just the wrong part of the park Kike Hernandez. For the moment, the Dodgers' last hope. Strike one. Hey. Again, the big change in the lineup. He's responded with two hits and an RBI. Defense, Mike Hazen pacing. The team he put together on the verge of doing something very few expected. But that's part of the history of the Diamondbacks. Came into existence in 1998, won the World Series in 2001. Fastest ever for an expansion team. The 2 1 pitch. They check. Mm -hmm. Yes. Evens the count. Will Little is the umpire down at first. It's got to be the hardest call to make for an umpire. You never want to decide the game with a call on a check swing. 48,000 plus. Every seat sold. Almost none of them in use right now. Everybody's standing. And the 2 2 pitch. Hit in the air to left. Goriel is there. The Arizona Diamondbacks sweep the Dodgers and head for the LCS. Dodgers swept in the playoff series for the first time since 2006. Diamondbacks advanced at the NLCS for the third time, first since 2007. And today set a record. Four home runs in the third inning. It's never been done before in the post. And as the last qualifier, no matter who they play, the Phillies or the Braves, they're on the road to start it, but they'll take it. They won four straight games on the road. They swept two division winners, the Brewers of the Central and the big bad Dodgers of the West. And you know how these fans feel. They'd be happy no matter who the D-backs beat, but it's especially sweet because it's the Dodgers, because they always feel as if they're sort of a second cousin to the Dodgers in the National League West. 
So the Dodgers in two successive years lose to the Padres, and now the Diamondbacks. In their own division, teams they outdistance soundly over 162, but then when you turn the page to October, it's a blank page. How about, the, how about the acquisitions for Lavello? Pham, who came over and solidified the offense. This is the last out. Hernandez off the end of the bat. A simple humpback liner into the glove of Gurriel and Seawald. Another acquisition that solidified that Diamondback bullpen. 84 wins, a modest total in the regular season. What matters now, 5-0 and oh in the postseason. Corbin Carroll on base 13 times in five games. Brandon fought with the game of his life. Yeah. Doesn't get the victory because he didn't quite go five. But in the minds of his manager and these fans, he got the job done. And the Dodgers who scored more than 900 runs this year, averaged better than five and a half runs per game, scored exactly two runs in all three games. They lost 11-2, and then twice, 4-2. Downstairs to Lauren Shahadi. Lauren. Tori, congratulations. I saw you hug every single person on this field. I saw a poster on your wall this morning. It said, win the inch. How did that mantra lead you to the NLCS? First of all, there's a lot of love in this clubhouse. It's real, it's here every day. Um, Win the inch means a lot of things to this organization. It's something that it's something that we believe in. It's part of our culture. It's about preparation, going out there and believing you're going to get the job done and win, win the games like this. I mean, it's like iRobot coming out of the pen. Each guy nastier than the next. I just saw you hug Seawald. What'd you say to him? Uh, he, we, he and I have a running joke. We'll keep that between us. But, you know, he's come in here and solidified things for us with such a calm demeanor and ability to execute. And you're right, it was a team effort. It's about, it's, it's people caring about people in this organization, and that's what stood out to me today. Four home runs in one inning in the postseason, that's never happened before. What were you thinking watching that, Tori? Uh, it's almost unbelievable, right? I'm a fan too, and I was looking at it thinking, what in the world is happening here? But I think it's about winning the inch right. and prepping. Our guys understood the what studio, they had to do right? to make some adjustments, and they went out there and made it happen. The one that was really uh, impressive for me was Gabby Moreno. He hits one foul, and then he hits one fair. It's a great moment for us. You created this culture. Enjoy it, Tori. Thank you so much. Bob. Lauren, thanks very much. Well, the Phillies and the Braves are yet to settle their business. That's right. Phillies lead two games to one, trying to make it two consecutive Octobers where they get past the Braves and upset the odds. So here's the bracket. There it is. If you had the Diamondbacks advancing to the LCS, good for you. <laughs> final score tonight, D-backs four, Dodgers two, and what matters most is the final score in the series is 3-0 Arizona. Ron, thank you so much. Thanks, as Bob, always, an what a pleasure. An honor. And for Lauren Shahadi, as well as Ron Darling, Elliot Kalb of the booth, and all the men and women in the truck, Bob Costas saying so long, and coming up is the post-game show. It's the closer with Ernie Johnson. Curtis Janderson, Jimmy Rollins, and of course Pedro Martinez. Good night from Arizona. <laughs>